Hello and welcome to another mixtape show. And today it's my absolute pleasure to say hello to Evan Stanley from Amber Wild. How are you, Evan? I'm great, man. Thanks for having me. Ah, uh, it's an absolute pleasure. It's an absolute pleasure. Now you've just, I believe you just finished the tour supporting Kiss on the American leg of their farewell tour. Is that right? Yeah, we just finished up. We played the last two nights at the garden with them. Played a sold out headline show in New York the day after, got back and did the same in LA two days after. And now we're, that was supposed to be our last show of the year, but we can't get enough of playing. So we're playing one more on Tuesday and then we'll break for the holidays. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's a pretty good gig to get supporting Kiss. You must, you must have someone on the inside there, mate. That was, you know, it's an <laughs> unbelievable, unbelievable opportunity. And it's, you know, very, very grateful to have the love there that got us on and you know, it's an interesting thing because the one thing is at the end of the day, no matter what connections you got or who you got behind you, the public gets to decide what works and what doesn't. Exactly so right. yeah. you know, especially playing for KISS fans, that's an audience that's been built up over the last, you know, 50 years. That's half a century mm -hmm. of bombastic shows and killer songs and that many life moments that people have, you know, attached to with kiss as, as the music playing there. And it's, that's something that's, that's hard to go on in front of. So we knew going in, we had to make sure we were on our, on our shit. And I'm really happy to say that, it, you know, every night went over great. And, you know, we really, I think by the third song or so always seemed to win everyone over and it was an absolute blast. Yeah. I can, I can see from giving your, your single, your double A side single that's out at the moment, Breakout and Silver. I can see from, from listening to that, obviously I haven't seen you live, but just listening to that, I could tell that you would, you would more than likely go over really well, like with Kiss fans. It's a fantastic single. Just tell us a little bit about like sort of the writing and the, and the sort of recording process and, and your sort of creative process when, when you go into to writing songs. Yeah. I mean, it's different with every one of them. You know, one thing that's so great is to see the band bring everything to life and everyone in the band really brings a lot to the table. So there are some songs that I've written by myself, top to bottom and brought in. And there are other songs that I've brought in almost done. And then songs that Marsh has brought in or Tommy's had lyrics he's brought in. And there's tons of times, you know, bring something in that's partially done and we kind of finish up together. But even the stuff that, you know, I wrote by myself, like, it comes to life when the band plays it, you know, everyone's doing so much to, to really bring their A game and, and set apart what we do, or hopefully set apart what we do. And that's something that really got us going early is really quickly, even though we hadn't quite figured out what maybe the sound was at the very beginning, we knew there was chemistry there from the really the first time we played, it was like, okay, there's definitely something here. There's something, there's something here that, we don't really feel off and we got to, we got to grab that and run with it, you know? So yeah. after that, it was just figuring out, okay, where, where do we sound best and what do we do best? And that was a, that was a really great process too. And an ongoing one, you know, that's something I think every band, you kind of come into your own and then you continue, hopefully continue to develop and always push yourself. Whereabouts did, did you all meet? How did you all sort of come together as a band? I met Tommy through so Thomas Lowry is the drummer and I met him through a mutual friend just out at a diner one night and I'd heard him play. I knew he was killer and he knew Marsh, uh, Marshall Vi, who's the other guitar player and he sings great too. And then after we started playing together, we started playing in about January, all three of us. And then we were playing with another bass player and good guy, but it just wasn't quite the right fit. And we still had a lot of gigs on the book. So we kind of were in a scramble asking around, you know, and my buddy Frank, who's a great guitar player, was like, you should talk to this guy, Jake. And that's Jake Massoneri, who's the bass player. We met him. Marsh and I went to have a drink with him one night. And we just clicked. And it was like, all right, this is good. Well, let's go yeah. play and play the next, yeah. either the next day or the day after. And then it was like, well, we got a gig this weekend. You, you in? And yeah. that was that. It just worked. Yeah. I had I had Danita Sparks from L7 on the show a few weeks ago, and I asked her, like someone been in the biz for for that amount of time, like what would be a good piece of advice for her to to bands like starting out now, like young bands, and she said, form your band, like like first, like just you know with your mates, 
like and mm. then decide like what you're going to do like it's important to to you know have that like connection as people before you start sort of you know making music together it's just like sit down and you know i'm going to start a band do you want to be in it yeah what do you want to play i'll play drums do you know what i mean and it was yeah, it was a fantastic bit of advice yeah especially for longevity i think if you get on well and you're touring you're in each other's pockets it's, it's good to have that kind of you know friendship and that connection for sure absolutely and i think it helps everyone really carries a lot of weight you know there's no lazy member there's no one and it's all everything is always about the greater good for the band which i'm so grateful for everyone in it myself included you know we're always looking out what's best for the band because if the band does well we all do well you know and whether that is with a song or with performance or even down to at the end of the night you know at the echo in la like we didn't have anyone running merch and we had a lot of people trying to buy merch so i ran over to the merch table after but then our gear yeah. has to get packed up. so jake packed all my gear because he was like okay i saw you're busy with merch it's like it's not one of those things that, like you know, he's running a, a Helix, which is a thing instead of an amp. So his packup was easy. And mm. I know a lot of guys who would have been like, well, I did my packup. Like I did my loadout. Like you got to finish yeah. yours. And it's like, oh, he was just yeah. like, hey, how do you pack this? Where does this strap go? It's like, shit. And then he did everything yeah. while I merch. And it's like, you know, that's really indicative of how all the guys are. Everyone really looks out for one another and does yeah. uh, everything we can to help the band. Fantastic, fantastic. And future plans, Evan, like 2024 going forward for you. Obviously, you've got the single out at the moment on, on the streaming platforms and everything like that. Are we, are we going to be getting a full album at some point in, in the near future? As much as I'd love to drop a full album, I know all the guys in the band were all very much, you know, album fans. We love sitting down and listening to an album cover to cover. I think that it's smarter to just put out singles at the moment with the way music is now with how much time and energy and love and everything else goes into making a record, we don't want to put it out prematurely until there are people who go, we really want to hear a record. You know, mm. I think nowadays attention spans are so short. You got to make sure people are there for 10 songs. It's hard enough to get them for one. So for now we got a lot, mm. a lot of music, but we're going to, you know, continue to put it out like singles, at least for the time being. And then we'll loop around with the record when the time's right. But until then, we're going to get some live singles out. We're going to get some new studio stuff. It'll be a good mix of both. And, you know, hopefully between that and live shows, we keep people coming back for a little more. And where can people connect with you, Evan? In, what's the best place? Is it on, on the socials, on Instagram or? Yeah, the easiest is socials. I mean, we're on all the socials. Insta, we're probably the most active on. That's at Amber Wild Band. Mm -hmm. And all four of us are on there. You're only talking to us. So anything that gets responded to or liked or whatever off that account is one of us and it's the quickest and easiest way to get you know a direct line awesome and the singles out on all the streaming platforms spotify apple music and, and all those sorts of places yes sir everywhere yep. you can stream it should be pretty easy to find okay cool cool all right evan let's let's drop into to your mixtape track choices now mate now as you know my show is called the mixtape and it's like you know that idea of just spreading music you know like we used to back in the day by by making up tapes and stuff just on a slightly bigger scale so whenever i make up a playlist or a compilation or a mixtape anything like that the first track has to be a killer sort of attention grabber so so what would be your your track one attention grabber mate well i'll i'll Put the disclaimer on this with my list is a little all over the place, but my first track is oh, America by Tom Petty. Ah, yes. Fantastic track. Tom. That's, Tom Petty is one of my favorite writers of all time. I love him so much. And that's, I, it's hard to choose a favorite Petty song, but that's definitely up there. That's the one that got me into him. Even when I was younger, I'd hear that and be like, this is, this is crazy. Yeah. Bizarrely, I don't know why. I think it's featured in the movie, but it always, always reminds me of Silence of the Lambs. That movie. I think one really? of the characters is singing it in the car or something like that. And I, whenever I think of that song, I always, always think of that scene. Yeah, it's a bizarre memory to have to that song. But yeah. Oh man, I gotta rewatch Silence of the Lambs. It's been a minute, but yeah, I, that song is just ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a fantastic track, and sadly missed Tom Petty for sure. Yeah, uh, superb. Superb choice for, for an attention grabber, mate. Certainly is that. Track two, Evan, I asked you to pick a song that you sing loud and proud when you're on your own in the car or the shower, mate. What did you pick? A whole lot of love. That's oh. just, oh. it's such a, such a ridiculous vocal. And I love that song. And that's one that, you know, you can't ever out Robert Plant or Robert Plant. So you won't <laughs> catch me singing it in public, but man, 
when I'm by myself, yeah. I'll I'll go for it because that's just a a ripper. I think that's that's one of those you could you like for me, uh, my sort of rudimentary singing abilities. Like you get the extra you get the extra lift when you're in the shower from the from the steam and the moisture. Like you get you go that yeah, extra exactly. like got, mile. You know what I mean? You get, the steam. Yeah, that's that's one of the only ones that you could you could yeah, it's gonna give you a boost for sure. Like you say, you'd never catch me singing that in public either. <laughs> that's one of those you yeah, just think that. And that whole lot of love too. It's funny, a lot of people don't know, but if you listen to a whole lot of love, you can go back about a year before and listen to the small faces version of You Need Lovin', which is a muddy water song. Mm -hmm. And that's where a whole lot of love, a lot of the vocal comes from Steve Marriott. His melody and his approach to singing You Need Lovin' is very, very similar to Plants on Whole Lot of Love. And the songs are really similar. Granted, Whole Lot of Love is iconic. It has the riff. It has, you know, the totality. But go back and check out Steve Marriott singing You Need Love. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot, a lot, a lot of Whole Lot of Love in there. I think it's about a year or a year and a half before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. I had this similar conversation. I can't remember who it was with now, but the song was Satisfaction by the Rolling Stones and it was a Neil Young track. That so yeah, came out a couple uh, of years later. It's Mr. Soul. That's it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it, Mr. Soul. I yeah. Remember, did Mr. Soul come out first or was Sat no. I thought Satisfaction was first? Yeah, it did. Yeah, it was about a year and a half earlier, yeah. Because uh, I remember reading a story about Keith Richards that he woke up in the middle of the night hit hit record yeah. on a tape player and, and recorded that riff it. and then went back to sleep that's a great album that that, that neil young track that was a perth band called the reinhardt's he, he picked that track and yeah we had we had a very similar conversation about and i think in the 60s particularly they were quite as i put it economical with their like yeah. sort of riffs and <laughs> with their riffs and melodies and, and stuff like that oh, yeah sure. absolutely absolutely okay and track three, Evan, for your mixtape, I asked you to pick a cover version. What did you pick for that, mate? Just Like a Woman, the Richie Havens version off Mixed Bag. That is, I love Bob Dylan. I really love, I love Dylan. And it's rare that I like a cover version more. But it was mm. a toss up between Mr. Tambourine Man, the Birds version, and Just yeah. Like a Woman, the Richie Havens version. Because both of those covers, as much as I love Dylan, I think are better than the originals. And I... I only picked Richie Havens because today I happen to be feeling that a little more. But if you caught me tomorrow mm -hmm. or yesterday, I might as well have said Mr. Tambourine Man because both of those to me are just the perfect covers. I think Bob Dylan is probably the most, he makes the most appearances on, on the mixtape either as a, as a, yeah, in a cover or as songs in, in his own right. I'm pretty sure he's, he's up there as number one. But when you said That's just true. like a woman, when you said just like a woman, I was hoping you were going to say Jeff Buckley. Because he does oh, man, an yeah. he does an amazing cover version of that on live at Chennai. Oh, um, he does, yeah, untouchable. Yeah, that would be that's one again one of them. Like you say, it's, it's rare that you think that uh, the uh, cover's better than the original, but that is one that I would pick as as yeah as better than the original. And probably I'm not not doing Dylan a disservice because I think he's just one of them artists. His songs get covered like so often, but I would put all along the Watchtower by Hendrix in that. Oh, in that, for sure. In that category as well, like as, as a no, better than the original. Like, yeah. I had yeah. that blaring the other day, one of the first days I got back to LA, and it was like my first day driving in a couple months. And I just had that cranked and yeah, it ridiculous. I mean, yeah. it's you would never think that's a cover. Exactly right. Yeah, yeah. That's the the, the again, having this question, <clears throat> excuse me, in the mixtape, it kind of yeah, that that comes up a lot, like. Uh, you would never know like that's the sign for me of a of a quality cover version is you don't know it's a cover yeah. and and they put their own sort of stamp on it there's an amazing cover of satisfaction again by the rolling stones by an australian band called devo which is which is well well worth looking out for they're sort of talking headsy sort of oh yeah art rock sort of band know. um and and that you would never know if you didn't know satisfaction was a rolling stone song you would think it was one of theirs like it's just yeah, yeah. they put their own stamp on it so hard yeah, cover versions. I love I love a cover. That's one of my one of my favorite questions um to ask. Okay, Evan, um track four of your mixtape, and I asked you to pick a song you wish you could play to your 18-year-old self. What did you pick for that, mate? This one's hard just because you know, music has been such a you know, I mean it's been it's been everything to me every step along the way. So I think everything I kind of heard at the right time. It, for that reason granted 
this song I wish I heard earlier. So I'm going to say 30 Days in the Hole by Humble Pie. That wow. song, I think I heard that for the first time when I was maybe 20 or 21. So I didn't hear that till I was a little older, but that song's ridiculous. I mean, bringing back Steve Marriott, the playing, the band is on fire. I mean, the whole band is ridiculous. And then Greg Ridley too, his voice, great, great bass mm. playing, but his voice yeah. is the perfect counterpart to Marriott. So yeah, I, you know, I'm I'm happy I heard it when I did, but if I could have heard it a little earlier, probably would have been good. Yeah, you would have you would have had a, a fairly quality upbringing, I would have thought, in terms of what you were hearing as, as a young as a young man and a kid like around the house and you know what sort of stuff were you sort of listening to when you were that age, Evan? I mean everything. I I heard a lot from my parents, and then you know Green Day was the first band that I got super into, independent of my parents, and they're still one of my favorite bands ever. The Killers, Green Day. Of course, Beatles, Zeppelin, The Who, Crosby, Stills and Nash, The Birds, Teenage Fan Club, Mountain. Teenage Fan Club, quality band. That's a good pick, oh, mate. I yeah. love that, man. Especially bandwagon like Bandwagon Esque is a, is a quality album. Oh, that yeah. run of like Bandwagon Esque 13 Grand Prix to me. Mm. Those are like, damn, yeah. like they're all so, they're all so different, but still so Teenage Fan Club. Mm. And back to back to back was like, yeah, those are, I love those records. I, mm -hmm. I turn everyone onto those I can, but I, I grew up with everything. I mean, everything from Buddy Guy to The Temptations to Nirvana to Tears for Fears to Big Star to The Pretenders to Joni Mitchell. I mean, it's like, you know, and Blink-182 to My Chemical Romance. It's like everything. I love, I love yeah. it all. It's like it's great stuff in every genre and bad stuff. I think it's just... Mm -hmm. It's easy to write off a whole genre or a whole era, but like there's great stuff to be found if you look. Yeah, absolutely, for sure. I saw just quickly going back to the Killers, I saw, I think yesterday or the day before, they're they're touring their debut album, 20th anniversary. Like and I was that. like, What? That's ridiculous. No, 20 years, what? That's no way. Like they haven't been around that long for sure. But yeah, I think 2003, Hot Fuss came out and I was like, Oh man, that's ridiculous. Like that makes me feel so old. Oh, I got to go see that. That's amazing. I think it's like a greatest hits tour, I think. But yeah, it's 20 years. I was like, oh man, yeah. I saw that would have been 2003, 2004, New Year's Eve in downtown LA. They they like closed off like a, a sort of a couple of streets in like a crossroads. And they had like mm -hmm. a dance down one end and they had the killers on stage down the other end. And yeah, that was that was the first time I ever saw them live. Yeah, funnily enough, in, in Los Angeles. And yeah, fantastic gig. Yeah, amazing. That, that first album. I've seen them live a few times. And Hot Fuss is up there. I think it's one of my all-time favorite albums of all time. Okay. And track five, Evan, we, we've all done it. I know I certainly have. When I make up a mixtape or a compilation, you you slip one on there to let the listener know that you're sort of, you know, romantically keen on, on them. What's the track you would pick for that, mate? I'm heavy handed, but I went with the lighter choice. I did I'm on fire by Springsteen. Oh yes. Fantastic choice. Yeah. Yeah. I think Springsteen again, like like Dylan, he's he makes the, one of the most appearances is on my on my mixtape. But I think I was reading something yesterday. Someone it was it might have been a Facebook post about love songs that are, you know, maybe haven't aged so well. And someone put that one on there as like it, it sounded a bit sort of lyrically creepy and obsessive. Um, I, well, I feel like anytime you, I think it's more just the time. Anytime you say, Hey, little girl, is your daddy home? It's like, all right, that's, <laughs> no, yeah, that's yeah, a little yeah. questionable. Like, it's mm -hmm. like, I, I love that song. And I think anyone really listening, no, like you get it, but it's yeah. definitely like, I don't know. I've never called a girl I'm hooking up with little girl. That's just not no, my thing yeah, personally, yeah. but I love I think Springs. So it's of its time as well and, and place like in the 1980s, you know, you can't judge a, a song lyrically by sort of 2023 standards. I don't think like it was, I don't know, was it 84 or whatever when Born in the USA came out. I don't think, I think it's so crazy. The idea that people look back, of course, there's certain things across time that are like just bad, you know, like there's certain things like that you just don't do because that's fucked up. That's bad. But so much, especially within art and culture, is relative where the idea that you look back 30, 40, 50 years and you're like, can you believe they said that? I'm like, 
well, yeah, because it was 50 years ago. I don't know what shit yeah. was like then. Yeah, dude, like, exactly like, right. Yeah. I look back 10 years ago and like, it's, you know, I think it's crazy to judge exactly like you're saying. It's like, would I say, hey, little girl, is your daddy home? Probably not. But that's also just not how I grew up talking. Like, I'm yeah. not, I wasn't born in 19, what, 49 or something, 50. Like, yeah. the world's different. Like, yeah, judging stuff by today's Absolutely. standards, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah, no, absolutely. Bob's You're not wrong. Song. Yet. It's so good. Yeah, <laughs> I know. And I think that the, the singles, there's so many, there's like five or six classic singles yeah. off that album. Like, that that's just an absolute like, purple glory. patch of an album. Oh, yeah. You got Glory Days. You got Born in Born the USA. USA. You got Bobby Jean, I think. Bobby Jean yep, was probably got a got single. Yeah. Dance in the um, Dark. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, absolute bangers. Every single one of them. Yeah. Yeah, Unreal. Crazy. Yeah. Okay. And finally, Evan track six of your mixtape i always try and slip one on that's a bit left field a little bit obscure maybe a b-side or an album track or something like that what did you pick for that one mate this was a toss-up so this was this was a hard one but i had to get some beatles on there i almost went with let them run wild which was the b-side of the california girls it was the first uh one of the first singles that brian wilson produced for the beach boys that and california girls that were kind of indicative of where it was going towards pet sounds so it came out first and it was it was on summer days and summer nights i think but i love that song let them run wild but it lost out to rain by the beatles crazy to think the idea that the they had so many great songs that they could afford to make that not only a b-side but a b-side that didn't even appear on an album i'm like Mm. you got to have amazing songs to say yeah this one can just be a b-side don't worry about it like yeah with a song that good for a song that incredible to just be like yeah put on the beef side like that's fucking crazy oh, no. yeah. i i can never get over that every time i hear that song I'm like this was a b-side that never made it on a record and it's that yeah. good i oh, know yeah it's insane that's- what did you make of the of the new track the new beatles track now and forever have you heard that yeah it's cool it's you know i think it's hard because I gave it a few listens and it's definitely, it's cool. I like the idea. I think it's a vibe. I don't think it stands up to the quality of a lot of Beatles stuff. I don't think it would be out of place like as a, you know, album cut on the white album or something, but, and I don't mean that in a bad way. Like, you know, the Beatles are unfathomably good. The amount of incredible, you know, a plus 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 material they put out in such a short amount of time is mind boggling. But yeah, there were some album cuts that were like fine. And to me, it feels more like it's a cool, it's a really cool story. It's a really cool vibe because we get to hear it again. Like I like what yeah, they did. Yeah. Once I got over the novelty and the cool, like, Hey, this is really sick. We get to hear Beatles that we haven't heard. Once I got over that, like, it's not a song I'd maybe listen to a ton it's not bad or anything. It's like, I mean, it's the Beatles. Yeah. You can't, it's, you can't be, it's the Beatles. <laughs> yeah. You can't, they're okay. is still like ridiculous, but yeah. it's not a song I've gone back to since I first heard it. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I've been, I've listened to the Beatles endlessly since then. So it's, yeah. you know, it's cool for sure, but it wasn't, it didn't move me maybe the way a lot of the stuff does, yeah. but I have a friend who heard it and have like, had their minds blown and listened to it nonstop. Mm. And that's amazing because at the end of the day, like yeah. music is just about what moves you and what makes you happy. So if it makes, I thought it was really cool. It didn't maybe emotionally connect with me, but it definitely did with some people. And I think that's awesome. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. On that note, Evan Stanley, thanks so much for coming on the mixtape. Really, really appreciate your time. Hopefully in the not too distant so future, we'll, we'll see you down in Australia on tour, mate. That'll be fantastic. Until then, take it easy, mate. And I'll see you later. Have a great one. And thanks for having me. No problem at all. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year, mate. See you soon. See you soon.